And maybe, just maybe, that'll help you at least to relieve the symptoms by helping you, you know, blast a couple snot rockets while you're out there uh, and come back going, ah, I can actually breathe. Episode 927 of Diz Runs Radio is a quick tip episode, best of ish edition. Today's quick tip running outside during allergy season. Hey guys, uh, real quick today before we dive into today's quick tip, take a little trip back down memory lane. Uh, not doing a, a typical sponsor today. Instead, just giving you a, another another plug for the uh, the pain in the canal uh, virtual challenge. Which, if you listen to the the episode previous to this one, episode nine twenty six with uh, Marty Pasternak, um, that's that's the virtual or not. He's doing the actual run this summer, but that's the virtual run challenge that he's uh, put together as well in support of his run and uh, the fundraising efforts towards his cousin Kevin's uh, colon cancer uh, charity that, that they've organized. Um, and so Marty reached out and asked if he could do a sponsored post to help try to get more people involved and give a discount code and all that kind of stuff. I told him we didn't need to do a sponsored episode. We just do it. Uh, but he did give a discount code. So if you're on the fence, kind of not so sure, hemming and hawing, um, you can save 15% on the, the cost of signing up for the virtual race. Uh, and you can sign up for the virtual race at pitcanal.com. And that's pain in the canal, pitcanal.com. And use the code DizRuns at checkout. Save yourself 15%. Um, here's my additional bonus that he doesn't know that I'm doing, but I'm going to do it because I think that what he's doing is awesome. And I'm definitely joining the, the, the virtual race. Um, if you sign up, and use the discount code or not use the discount code. Totally up to you. But if you make an additional donation of, of whatever amount, maybe maybe the 15% that you're saving, you just go ahead and donate that back to the cause because you can add additional donations there as well. Um, or if you want to donate more, that's awesome. Um, let me know. And I, this is the honor system, so don't cheat, but let me know. Um, and you get a free coaching call. Use it whenever you want. No expirations on it. Um, just let me know. We'll put, we'll add you to the list. And then anytime you want to make a call, you just let me know. We've got something to work through. Happy to do it. Happy to support what Marty's got going on. Uh, I think I mentioned in the episode or else I mentioned to him separately that colorectal cancer, like my, my grandma had that. That's what, that's what uh, took her life. Uh, so obviously it, it's, it's close to my heart as well. Um, and I'm happy to, to try to help support that. So remember, there's two options. There's a 15 mile per week average option. There's also a 30 mile per week average option. But all of that information is there at pitcanal.com. The race officially starts May the 15th, runs through August the 21st. Um, I'm doing it. Addison said she wants to do it, so she's doing the kids version. Uh, and we'd love to have some of you guys join us. So uh, pitcanal.com. Diz runs at checkout. Save yourself 15% and either donate that 15% or make an additional donation and you get a free uh, coaching call to help work through whatever issues, obstacles, struggles, whatever the case might be from me. Just let me know. And again, be honest. Don't, don't cheat me out of that one. Um, actually don't cheat the Buffalo, uh, colon core out of that. You can cheat me out of it. I don't care about that. Uh, but support, support the cause, uh, much appreciated. So on to today's quick tip. And, and those of you that have been around for a while, you know that the, the best of ish episodes, they're, they're previous episodes where the blog post basically stays the same. And boy, back in the day, I wrote some terrible blog posts. Terrible blog posts. Uh, but the blog post for today's episode basically is the same as it was back in October, not October, back in April of 2016, episode 244, you know, some almost 700 episodes ago. Um, but the audio is a new take on the topic from back then. And uh, I'm adding a few things, I think, to, to the topic from back then. But uh, if this is a little more all over the place than usual, I apologize. But... Hopefully something in here helps because I'm the first one that's going to admit that I'm not an allergist. All right. I'm not an expert when it comes to allergies. I'm not an expert in anything. You can make an argument. I'm not an expert in anything I ever talk about. I'm definitely no expert in anything I'm talking about today. These are some very unofficial methods or very unofficial things that may or may not have helped me kind of work through the worst of my allergy situation. So my allergy situation is that as a kid in Northern Michigan, Zero allergies, zero issues with allergies ever. Now, maybe it was just because I was a kid. Maybe if I went back now, maybe I'd have some, some aller, uh, allergic issues, some, some congestion, some spring allergies uh, now, but zero to 18, never once did I have any allergy issues. Moved to Florida for college, allergy issues every year, every spring, usually every fall, some type of two weeks where it looked like I had pink eye, um... I didn't because I had pink eye a few times in college, uh, as you do, but it would look like it was just, I mean, the reddest eyes, all congested, feeling nasty. 
Um, and then, you know, two weeks later, gone. Good to go. No, no factor after that. Um, and it was like clockwork. Every spring, every fall, no, no doubt about it. Moved to Tennessee for grad school, no allergy issues. Funny how that worked out. Moved back to Florida after grad school, allergy issues. So my assumption is, is that I'm allergic to something down here. Maybe it's all coincidence. My assumption is that uh, it's not a coincidence. You be the judge on that. So, you know, this would have been back, you know, 20, certainly in the early 2000s when I was down here for, for undergrad, moved back after grad school in 2000 and whatever, 2009, 2010, struggling, struggling, taking all the allergy pills, yada, yada, yada. And somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in that time frame, somebody mentioned the idea to me of using local honey and, and potentially that having the impact of reducing the allergic reaction to different things that are in the air. Sounds a little woo-woo to me, if I'm honest. Still kind of sounds a little woo-woo to me. But around that time, I started taking in, you know, using, instead of using just the, the generic re- regular honey from the, you know, the, from the grocery store, seeking out local beekeepers, seeking out local unpasteurized raw honey. And I'll be damned, guys. Like, my allergies didn't disappear, and it certainly wasn't an overnight thing. Kind of every allergy season, every spring, every fall, like it got a little more bearable, a little less, less congested, a um, little less pink eye ish. Felt like something was going on there. Now, if you're an allergist and you're like, dude, Diz, this is ridiculous. This is, no, I'm sorry. Please tell me so I can correct the record. But I'm not saying that there's a connection there, I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I'm not saying that if you've got some allergies in the Northeast or the Southwest or wherever you might be, that seeking out local honey is going to be your cure-all. I'm not saying it was a cure-all for me. I'm saying it was a coincidence at least, or there was an impact. So it might be worth making the switch, you know, using a little bit of, of honey to sweeten your, your drinks or to sweeten your, your baked goods or just to, you know, put on a peanut butter and honey sandwich because those are delicious. Um, you know, might be worth trying. And if you're not sure where to find local honey, uh, localharvest.org, localharvest.org is a great, great website, great resource for local, locally produced, all kinds of locally produced things, certainly on the food side of things. Lots of good options there. Check it out. And even if you're not looking for local honey, might check it out for local produce, find like a CSA farm, things like that. Not another good plug for local harvest. So, so maybe that might be something that would help you, you know, if, if, if kind of as spring is approaching, you're kind of like, God, I hate spring because I can't run outside because my allergies are so bad. Um, not saying that's going to be the cure all this year, but it might help dumb down the the symptoms a little bit. might be worth giving it a shot. Another thing that, that again, I don't know if this works. I don't know that, uh, that this made any difference at all, but again, call it a coincidence and you might not be wrong, but I'm going to say that, Hey, maybe it played a part as well is that once I like really committed to running, which would have happened like 2010, 2011, something like that. When I really committed to running consistently, not just because there was a race that was coming up and I was like, Hey, you know, I might as well start training for this marathon. That's, that's 10 weeks out because you know, I might, that might make sense. Uh, but when I was really like, I'm going to be a runner, I'm going to run consistently multiple days per week, multiple miles. Each time I go for a run, like this is something that I'm going to do. And I was outside every day. Every day through the spring, every day through the fall, maybe not every day, but you know what I mean? Every running day outside, because, because even then, even in the early days of Diz the runner, I was Diz the the treadmill hater. Okay. So, you know, I was, I was out there consistently putting in a half an hour here, 40 minutes there, an hour and a half there, repeat, you know, same days every week. Um, my, my theory is that perhaps I kind of built up a little bit of a tolerance, built up a little bit of, of familiarity with whatever tropical citrical pollen that seems to affect me in Florida that didn't affect me in Tennessee or in, in Michigan. So that whenever the orange trees or whatever, whatever flowers or whatever it is that would be in bloom, whenever they were actually in bloom and, and it was bonkers, my, my allergies didn't go out of, out, didn't go crazy. Sure. I might have a little bit stuffier nose, might be a little bit runnier, might be a little bit more congested, might have a hint of, of pink eyes, but not like everybody that looks at you takes a sideways glance and takes a wide step because they're, they're convinced that you're a walking case of, of double pink eye. 
I think that it was just I, I built up a little bit of a tolerance to it, right? You know, kind of going back to, to the Dread Pirate Roberts days of the Princess Bride and Iocane Powder. You know, he spent years building up a tolerance to Iocane Powder. Maybe I spent years building up a tolerance to citrus pollen that I don't realize, but because I've done that, the last six, seven, eight years, like, my allergies, they're there occasionally, but they're, like, I wouldn't have been able to record podcast episodes for two weeks during the worst of my my allergy season um, a decade ago. Like, it would have been a non starter It would have been laughable to think that I could talk for, for certainly even for, like, a little bit here and there in an interview, but to do a solo episode, to do a Q and a episode, not happening. No way. My allergies were so bad. Like I'd be sneezing and coughing and gagging on, you know, the snot running down the back of my, my throat, which I know that's kind of gross, but like, let's not kid ourselves. We've all been there when we're super congested. Um, and these days like, eh, not that big of a deal. Is it a fluke? Is it a coincidence? Has it been other changes to my, my health, uh, and diet and things like that that have helped tone things down? I don't know. Will those two suggestions work for you? I don't know. I'm not saying they will. I'm not saying they won't. And and for those that really struggle with allergies, and you know who you are, I mean, I know I know for me at least, I was open to any possible solution. Placebo effect, some type of weird coincidence, I didn't care. If it helped, it helped. I was all in. And those are two things that I can point to that were kind of conscious choices that I made or con- at least maybe looking back, kind of, you know, re- reverse engineering. It was like, oh, I started using local honey about the same time that I started running outside year round, basically. Um, and if you're in the frigid cold, you don't have to run year round, but whenever you can get outside to run, get outside to run. Um, maybe those two combined help me reduce my, my allergy symptoms. I don't know. Worth a shot, in my opinion. Last thing on seasonal allergies and running. The one thing that, that I think that probably, hopefully, most of us can agree on, unless your allergies are so bad and you're so sensitive, in which case, just going outside is just a non-starter and you got to go full Thessaly for two or three weeks when the allergy season is the worst, which of course means just running on the treadmill, nothing but. Um, my my s- suggestion, my recommendation, my not for nothing is... To just get outside and run anyway, unless, you know, unless as soon as you step outside, you just can't because I don't know about you, but I know about me. Anytime I'm congested, whether it's a little bit of a cold, a little bit of allergies, whatever, going for a run helps clear the old pipes, you know, like the snot starts loosening up a little bit. The snot rockets start flying. And even if it's short, even if the relief is short lived when the run is finished, at least for 20 minutes half an hour, hour, maybe two hours, something like that. After a run, like I can breathe through my nose again. And that's a wonderful feeling. Uh, so if you, if you do struggle with allergies this spring, um, or maybe, you know, allergies in the summer, allergies, in the, allergies can come anytime. But if you have some allergy issues where you live, um, try the honey, try being consistent with being outside and kind of getting that, that low level of exposure every day and hope that maybe that helps to tamp things down. But just try, if you can, just try to run through it. And maybe, just maybe, that'll help you at least to relieve the symptoms by helping you, you know, blast a couple snot rockets while you're out there uh, and come back going, ah, I can actually breathe. Lovely thought. Lovely thought. I don't know. Allergists, chime in. Where am I missing the mark? What am, what am I talking out of my tuchus about more so than usual? Uh, let me know. Or what, what other kind of, you know, home remedies do you use? What, what helps you get through allergy season? Anything and everything allergy related, let me know at DizRuns on Twitter, at DizRuns on Instagram. You can also send an email to DizRuns at gmail.com. And of course, you can always leave a comment on the website. Uh, look at how pathetic my blog post attempts were for the quick tip episodes uh, some five and a half years ago uh, by pointing your browser over to disruns.com slash 927 today, disruns.com slash 927 and uh, slide on down there. It won't take you, you won't have to scroll very far. You have to scroll for like three paragraphs to get through the whole blog post and that'll put you in the uh, the comment section. You can leave your thoughts and feedbacks, takeaways and tell me what I'm wrong about. Tell me what works for you. All that stuff in the comment section at disruns.com slash 927. And uh, with that, I hope your allergy season isn't too bad. I, I hope that... Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I didn't used to know, I, I didn't used to be able to feel your pain. Then I definitely could feel your pain. And now I don't really feel your pain anymore. 
and I, I hope that something I said today or something that you, that somebody else says in the comment section or on Facebook or wherever uh, can help you to not feel the, the pain of allergies anymore. Um, and speaking of pain, pain in the canal, how's that? For, how is that for a transition? I don't know. That one might have been kind of clunky, but we're going to go with it. Pain in the canal, the P-I-T canal.com uh, website is up. You get yourself reg- registered, support Marty and what he's doing and, and no offense, Marty. More importantly, support the fight against colorectal cancer uh, and, and, and the, the uh, organization that Marty's cousin Kevin has set up, the, the Buffalo Colon Corps. Uh, sign up at PITcanal.com for either of the race distances uh, that, that might be something that would be good for you to do this summer. Uh, use the code DISRUNS uh, at checkout, and you'll save yourself 15%. And then uh, either donate that 15% back to the cause or donate more. Uh, and let me know, and you got a free coaching call for whenever you want to use it. All right. So, uh, any questions on that? Let me know. I think it's pretty straightforward. But uh, happy to support Marty. What, what he's got going on, uh, and like I said, it's it's a little bit hits a little bit close to home for me too. So I'm I'm honored to take part in it. Um, and hope you'll join us. Hope you'll join us. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. If you enjoyed this one, hit that share button. Otherwise, till next time, y'all. Please be well. Take good care. Thanks again for listening, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. See you. <laughs>